Hello, and welcome to part one of our Band in a Box 2022 for Windows DAW plugin new features overview video. With version four of the Band in a Box DAW plugin, there are over 40 enhancements, including a new chord settings dialog with Chord Builder, Chord Theory, and Micro Chords. You can now save and load your chord progressions. There is now four pages for a total of 32 tracks on the tracks table and each track now has its own volume slider for more control over the mix. There is now also real drum stems and much more. So I've got the Band in a Box plugin loaded inside Reaper right now, as you can see, but I'll enlarge the plugin quite a bit so we can focus on that for the time being. And we'll get started by opening up the new chord settings dialog. We can do this by pressing the chord settings button right here but there is also a shortcut we can use. We can just type M into any cell of the chord sheet and press enter. So here we have our chord settings dialog. We can see right here that we have two cells that represent the two cells in the current selected bar of our chord sheet. So just like the chord sheet, we can toggle our part marker here. And we can enter chords on each beat that will then show up in the chord sheet which you can kind of see here. We'll just delete those for now. And in the top left here, we can change our current bar by just typing in a number. And we can change our current beat with this drop down menu or by pressing the left and right arrows on either side of our little chord sheet here. Below the little chord sheet section, we have three tabs, Chord Builder, Chord Theory, and Micro Chords. Many of you may be familiar with the Chord Builder and Chord Theory features from the main Band in a Box program, but for those of you who are not familiar with it, let's quickly show you how it works. The Chord Builder allows you to hear and build chords up by clicking the root and the extension. You can hear the chords as you click them, and it also places that chord in the currently selected beat. So we have our root chords here. We have flat and sharp buttons here. We can modify the chord by adding a slash root note with this drop down menu. We have our most common extensions here, but we also have a much larger list to choose from by clicking this other menu. We can also add pushes, rests, shots, and holds in the chord builder. And when we apply rests, shots, or holds, this enables the exclude option, where we can choose to apply the rest, shot, or hold to all the tracks, or we can choose to exclude certain tracks. Up in the top right, we can play the current chord. And in the bottom here, we can clear the current chord. The chord theory section works a lot like the chord builder, but it displays and suggests chords that are most popular in the current key. The top row is diatonic chords. Other rows add additional chords that are part of the key, such as dominant seventh approach, slash chords, parallel minor, diminished, and the bottom row lists commonly used chords with the root in the key. So this allows you to quickly enter chords by clicking on the most common chords in the key. For example, if you stick to the top row, the chord progression you enter will be a typical song progression. Choosing from other rows will add variation and color to the progression. You can use this jazz button to show jazz chords instead of pop chords. 
This is a fun interactive way to enter and explore chord progressions and learn music chord theory at the same time. Okay, now let's move on to the micro chords tab. Previously, Band in a Box was limited to being able to enter four chords per bar. With the new micro chords feature that was added to both the main Band in a Box program and the DAW plugin, you can now enter up to four chords per beat. This is most beneficial in slower songs, because you can have up to 16 chords per bar. This opens up a lot of arrangement possibilities that simply were not possible in Band in a Box before. This feature generally works well with slower songs as you will want more chords more frequently at slower tempos. But there are also cases where it will work well with faster songs as well. So I've got a song loaded right now. It's the demo song for one of our new modern country styles. And I'm going to add some micro chords to this demo song. I'll play a bit of the song first just so we get a feel for it. We can enter our micro chords directly in the chord sheet here, but since we are already going over the chord settings dialog, I'll enter them from there. So I'll just type M and hit enter. And you can see that the M shortcut automatically opens up with the micro chords tab. And we can now see these four boxes. These are for the four micro chords we can enter. The chords we enter end up on the current beat that we have selected up here in the top. This can also be changed to triplets by pressing this button here. And I'll move ahead to bar 2, beat 1, and enter C and D minor. Move over to beat 2, and enter E minor, D minor. And then on beat 3, back to C. And after I enter all those, you can still see the C chord here, as it is the underlying chord for that bar. And the micro chords that I enter are more so passing chords. So I'll hit OK. And I'll play this to give it a listen. And as you can hear, those micro chords were played on the eighth notes for the first two beats. Earlier I mentioned that you can enter micro chords directly in the chord sheet here. This can be done using parentheses. And any chords typed within the parentheses will be the micro chords for that beat. So just a little reminder, generally you separate beats with a comma. So if I were to enter C, comma, D minor, I would have chords on beat 1 and 2. This would work the same when using parentheses to enter micro chords. So if I wanted to enter the same thing in bar 18 as I have in bar 2, I would type parentheses, then C, comma, D minor, and then end parentheses. So since that is all in the parentheses, this would all be beat 1. Then I would have another comma outside the parentheses to separate beats 1 and 2, then parentheses E minor, comma, D minor, end parentheses. And we can see that we have the same thing in bar 18 on beats 1 and 2 as we did above in bar 2. I also mentioned earlier that you can have up to 4 chords per beat rather than just 2. So I'll enter 4 chords on beats 1 and 2 now. C, D minor, E, and F, all within our first set of parentheses. Then a comma, and another parentheses, G, F, E minor, D minor, end parentheses. And then a C on beat 3. And we'll give that a listen. And now we have micro chords on the 16th notes. 
As you can see, this opens up so many more arrangement possibilities. So now we'll go back to the chord settings dialog and check out some more options. There's a force enabled button here. This is useful if you do not want to enter any micro chords in the current beat, but still want a beat of silence instead of the main chord. Another great enhancement added to the DAW plugin is the motifs feature, which can also be applied from this chord settings dialog. Motifs work very similar to micro chords, except it is just accenting whatever chord happens to be playing. So we are not entering any micro chords. We will just set whether we want rests or a motif. So I'll enter a motif on beat one and rests on the other notes in that beat. Motif on the end of beat two and rests on the other notes. And a motif on beat four with rests. So that means just short little hits will be played on beat one, on the end of beat two, and on beat four. So I'll just press OK again, generate, and let's give it a listen. That sounded pretty cool but I think I'd prefer if the last hit does not rest, but holds. So I'll open up the chord setting again and remove the rests on beat four. Press okay and generate and play again. I think that sounds great. Other great enhancements added to version 4 of the Band in a Box DAW plugin include the ability to save and load chord progressions. Volume sliders for each track have now been added within the plugin. And there is a new button where you can choose different types of chord symbols, including Roman numerals, Nashville notation, and more. You can also drag MIDI chords and markers from the plugin to your DAW, plus much more. Be sure to check out part two of the DAW plugin new features overview, where we go over the new Real Drums stems feature. Thanks for watching and have fun.